What's up? Big Chad. Ask me anything, ask me anything. It's Christmas Eve. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody. 1224, 2021. Just happy to be alive. Happy to be here with you. Let's get this started, folks. Let's uh, slide the music down here real quick. That's fun. For those who are asking uh, and do ask, that is the Church of Eight Wheels uh, is the name of that track. That's a um, a track I've used many times before. I have a lot of fun with it. I, I think it sets the right energy and the right emotion. So I'm going to roll through a couple things here real quick, just some free stuff to get you started off. I'm on Twitter, of course. At Big Cheds, I'd like to encourage you to go to the Banter YouTube, check on uh, that playlist, Trading Wisdom. I have an excellent uh, show with them. I just did episode uh, 13 yesterday with Chartman Dan. That guy's a wizard. Uh, So you definitely want to check that out. Go to my YouTube. Uh, Let's get out of here. That's all inside baseball, of course. All right. You get a little snapshot there. Um, Let's see, if you go to my playlist and you click on educational live streams, you can see uh, really where you want to go to get started when you're trading. You're not sure how how, how to look at a chart, what's volume, you know, what are moving averages and, um, you know, my setup too. A lot of people ask me, hey, can you tell me your, you know, your custom uh, settings from YouTube? Well, I don't have any. I'm sorry, from uh, TradingView, I don't. They're all default and you can see those settings. Uh, in that playlist, check that out. Check out emergency live streams. I did some, we had a Bitcoin live sale going on. So I did some great emergency live streams. Um, you know, the book, we've talked about it many times. The book is Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. Um, it's on Amazon, Kindle, hardcover, paperback, and now the audiobook format. It's doing really well. Thank you for your, for your support. If you can't afford the book, Um, You're going to want to go to that playlist, and I'm doing every single of the 50 lessons. I've done 10 so far. Um, I kind of space those out. You know, I try to do those about three or four weeks in between, but I'll eventually get that whole book up there for you for free. Check out Bitcoin Live if you're interested in learning how to trade. It is the best-in-class educational platform for crypto. I do two long-form updates every week. It doesn't matter what is going on. Christmas, New Year's. Vacation, I'm giving you an update. I want you to feel comfortable about, about kind of where the market is. So that's the deal. So let's see what's going on here. I'm going to check in with the chat room. I'm going to say what's up to everybody. Hello, legend. Good to see you. I'm just a guy. I'm, I'm just a guy who's been grinding this for a long time. You know, I kind of enjoy what I'm doing. Merry Christmas. Yep. Good to see you as well. Merry Christmas from Australia. Hello. High five. Good to see everybody. Some great comments. You know, everybody's in a good mood. It's the holidays. So we got about 181 of you here. It's kind of a mild audience, but that's okay. So I saw one of my members, one of the BCL members had asked me about Nier. And I want to just, I guess I'll just start out by talk, talk, uh, talking about Nier. Um, let's go. I think I have a little bit better price history on another exchange for Nier somewhere else. To, 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 on this watch list or perhaps on... The other watch list, right? Wow, brilliant stuff, Big Chads, right? Uh, let's just get that real quick, sorry. Let's go to, let's try it this way, near USDT. I know we've got a little more price history on maybe even Qcoin because I know that uh, they've got some of those alts. That's what I'm looking for. So someone had asked me for kind of an entry on near. Like, so the price is incredibly strong right now and you know, you don't just you don't just want to FOMO in. And if you've seen my tweets, I put out tweets. And by the way, thank you for watching. Um, please hit like and please hit subscribe. Um, you see my tweets where I say, you know, you, you could be playing AVAX right now or Luna or Soul, you know, instead of that, you know, quote unquote garbage alt, as I put it, whatever you're in. It doesn't mean just FOMO in. It means you identify that as the play and then you find your entry and your entry should be a dip. You want to find a dip entry. Uh, you want to buy the dip, right? You want to buy the dip in an uptrend, right? So what would that be? So clearly right here would be a very logical level, right? You, you think about the concept of a throwback or a bullish retest where you establish a resistance. Here it's established. Here it's kind of reaffirmed. Uh, we kind of fell just short of it here. Um, pardon me, beginning of December, middle of December. And then we broke through. So you may get a very classic throwback. We had one on Seoul, and I'll show you that later, perhaps. But maybe you get a, a throwback. That's where you'd want to enter, right? 12, 12, um, 
you know, 1250 range. Another option would be the rising EMA8, that green line. The price is pretty far above that right now. So the moral of the story is I would wait for a dip. I would not jump into this. I would not FOMO into it. You know, if you really want to, your first potentially correct entry might be right there on the top of that, you know, yesterday's high, top of that candle. But you got to have a pretty tight stop loss. If you're going to go ahead and enter at 14.3, you'd probably want to cut anything below 14. So in this type of a situation, you've identified the chart, you know you want to play it, mark it and wait for a dip. Wait for a good entry. You, you'll you'll find that eight, nine times out of, out of 10, um, you get a great entry. You get a better entry, right? 203 people. Good to see you folks here on this uh, on this Friday, day before Christmas. So let's check out the, the uh, chat room. Fire off your chart requests. Fire off your questions. Ask me about anything uh, to do with trading. If I, if I can help you, I'll, I, I will try to. If I have no idea, I'll say, listen, I have no idea. Um, let's see here. So this question about CRV, this has been a popular one. When will CRV dump? Um, let's, let's just find it here in my in my list. So CRV is incredibly strong, but look what we're doing. Let's clean it up a little bit. We're marching right into support, into a resistance, right? We're marching right into a level where it's been rejected in the past. Rejected here, briefly above it, but then you know came below and then rejected right there. So this is a critical level. Um, you want to be careful here because if you've taken profits on your entries down here at the lower Bollinger, you know, there's some initially some support established, kind of what Bitcoin did where it really established support, kind of a horizontal zone. And maybe you entered here on um, maybe on that lower high break, you waited and you kind of entered right there, right? As soon as it got above 3.8, right? So we talk about waiting, right? We were just looking at near. Well, look at um, CRV. See how CR CRV had these... Um, Oh, geez. Wow. I was just talking. I'll have to go back to uh, what's it called. So I'll go back and I'll do what I just did on near. So I just noticed that you didn't see the screen. So with CRV, if you'll notice, um, it was really incredibly bullish right here. But then it came back and it did that throwback, that bullish retest. So let me back up and I'm going to do what I just did on near and hopefully I'll get it right this time. All right. So near, we talked about the concept that you have a really well-established resistance level. It, it was rejected here, came back down, rejected again, November 12th. Yeah, I'm still getting used to this, um, this uh, stream yard thing. So yeah, anyway, you established the resistance and you broke right through. So I wouldn't just be FOMOing in. You want to identify a, a solid kind of buy the dip level. And that would be back at that level, 1250. I also mentioned you could try to buy the rising EMA 8. Or potentially, if you wanted to be aggressive and maybe try to buy here on that high of yesterday's candle, um, and you know, and but if you do, you want to have a pretty tight stop loss um, because you're better off waiting for a dip. Wait for a dip, you know. Wait for a dip. Um, and we're talking about CRV, and I mentioned the fact that it's kind of accelerating right into resistance. Get that resistance in that 550 range. And if you had, you know, let's say you had bought here at 320 on that support test, or maybe even waited. And you, you see how um, you see on these two sessions here, this 12th and 13th, you establish some resistance in that 388 range. When you broke up above that, you went long. And you know, you know, you're up here and you're saying, oh, I missed it, I missed it. If you look, what did you get? A really nice clean throwback or a bullish retest of this level. You came up, came back, right? So that's what you want to do in these bullish charts. You want to wait. So what might be kind of logical is to reject here. And then you kind of pull back and you and you look or you you pull back, right? Well, it would actually be a throwback. A pullback is a bearish retest, but you'd you'd kind of consolidate and then potentially you'd want to see have we put in that higher low and is that where we're gonna bounce? So if you're in CRV, I'd expect it to I would expect it to slow down here given this resistance and given this resistance. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That that might give you another kind of a buy the dip uh, type entry. All right. So uh, let's look at some, some questions here. BTC analysis. Do you think the bottom is in for Bitcoin? Um, you put me on the spot. I don't know yet. I don't know. Let's clean it up a little bit. I don't know because my thesis, um, weekly, right? Weekly MA 50. And yeah, it looks pretty good today. We've got two, two, two days left, but as soon as we closed below that MA 50 for the first time since that $8,000 range, I was on watch because that's a major sign of trend weakening. 
Um, I'm going to wait. You know, I will say if we close back up above the weekly MA50, then I mean, is the bottom in. When you say like the bottom is in, does that mean it's going to go to 100K? No, it just means that bearish momentum has been slowed down quite a bit. All right. Because you would you have the inside bar, the bear break, and then you would have no follow through on that. You'd have that kind of close back above the 50. So, you know, if that's the case, I would be a little bit more um, willing to take risk and play Bitcoin if we close above the 50 the, on the weekly. Right. But on the daily, we still have bearish structure. Right. We're still below the macro big picture lower high 53k right the highs high where it, it paused in september and then we're kind of stopped here remember, remember we had this um head and shoulders trying to form and a lot of bulls were just calling it a head and shoulders but they never really identified the, the invalidation points you can go back and review my videos and so we had the kind of violation of that right shoulder and that was a breakdown so you know, you want to close above the 50 and the weekly, and now we're back above the the blue line, and that's great. We've got a little bit of a momentum, some momentum going here on the diagonal break, and then we got a little bit of confirmation, right, on the on the what I call the two level level filter or that horizontal break. You've got bullish momentum. You've got reasons to go long. Like you went long here at 49.5. You're in a long trade. You know, did you slide your stop loss up? Or are you going to take profit? You know, we'll see, um, because. You've still got resistance above head. You've got that, you know, the bottom of the head there at 53K level. Um, you know, you've got the highs of September. So you've got that kind of jackpot area, kind of a jackpot area of resistance here. So, you know, I would say for the bottom to be in, like really in, in terms of, um, you know, continuing our climb to 100K, you know, you, we need to be trading above 53K, 53.5K. We need to turn that into support. And you may see a re bounce here, come rejection, and then that's our higher low. And then you come up, right? And then maybe it rejects there and then comes back, back right? Reject at the right shoulder. So if it does, basically, if it breaks above this level, let's clean it up. You know, for me to see a confirmed reversal on the daily, I'd really want to see this level flipped. And I'd want to see it not only flipped, but perhaps confirmed as support. Come back, throw back, and then go. So that's really what I need to see. I would say it looks the bleeding looks like it's stopped, but I've got two hours, two days, seven hours left to see that weekly confirmation of kind of back on that risk on type of environment on the weekly. So I hope that kind of um, kind of you know makes sense. Can you please talk about a trade that taught you a major lesson and your best and worst trade? Well, and my bet my worst trade I talk about in my blog, chedstrading.blogspot.com. Um, and I haven't updated, I haven't updated that in years. So there's old information there, but many years ago I was playing penny stocks and, um, I think I bought something and I think I turned like, you know, like 12,000 into like 200,000 and I ended up losing all of it, including the 12,000. I took zero profit and, you know, I got to the point where I was convincing myself it was only going to go up. And when like a top had been set and there was clearly support broken on the way down, I just kept adding. I kept adding. I kept adding. All of a sudden, I was below my initial entry. I added all the way down to pretty much zero and I ended up selling. And, you know, years later, it's it's still lower than when I sold. I mean, just it just, you know, it just went lower. So. You know, from that was two big lessons. I didn't take profit and um, I added to a loser, right? Once it became a losing position, I should have cut it. Instead, I added to it. So, you know, the major lesson is you want to you want to cut your losers early and you want to add to your winners. And, the, you know, through the evolution uh, of my trading uh, style, it's good to see 273 of you here. Happy holidays. Um, hit like and subscribe, please. You know, I've learned that, you know, a lot of people on Twitter, they see my trades and I'll talk you through a trade that I have going on right now, um, or actually I already closed out the, the short, but I had a short on Bitcoin um, just because I was looking for something. I'll show you something I called an up thrust. So you have a, a resistance established, you break up above it and you come right back below. That's actionable, right? Because anytime you have a resistance level and then you break it, you, you know, you fail to hold it, that's a move in the other direction. And so what I learned is like that's my thesis. My whole thesis was, hey, this is a false break of that high at 51.3. So if the price came back up, but I already took pro, I already um had taken profit by then. I moved my stop losses down, but it, it would have, I would have 
sold again when it went back up above that level. Like right here at 51.4, that whole thesis was invalidated. And eventually it came back below, but that's not the point. I could have got back into the trade. But the point I'm trying to make is I learned that I, I stick to my stop loss and my stop loss is the idea for the trade. So like if I got into a trade for one reason, you know, when that reason fails, you get out. Don't sit there and try to find another reason to stay in the trade. Like that's that's been a big lesson for me is, is um, you know, maintaining the trades. Like one of the, you asked me like one of the, the better trades I've made, um, you know, I had a really great short on Litecoin um, and even Bitcoin. I shorted Bitcoin from like 68K all the way down to 55K. And, um, you know, I've talked about that in my prior videos, how and why I did that. We had very clear, the clear upthrust here in the daily, you know, where we broke up above that, that 67K and we came back down. We had this outside bar. I've talked about this in all my videos, kind of the momentum slowing, potentially momentum reversing candle. And so that was one, one of my better trades. I shorted up here and I shorted Litecoin from like that 280 level. Cause Litecoin, you know, Litecoin with these mega pumps usually signals, um, you know, kind of the end of the run. And, um, you know, you had an up thrust here as well, where you broke up above it on this this big um, called a high wave spinning top, or even a long leg doji on November 10th. You broke up above this resistance. You failed to hold it, rejected again, and then came back and right in that day as well, like rejected again at 280. So I took shorts from 280. I rode those pretty far down. I had many positions, so I kind of took profit kind of all along the way. So that, you know, I always, I'm always kind of paying attention to when momentum, um, when momentum, when um, enthusiasm is really high and, and I'm careful. And you saw I put out a tweet yesterday. I said, enthusiasm is, is extremely high. Be careful. And that was right here at like 51.1, 51.2 roughly. I mean, we're kind of still in that, that range, but we shot up so high, so fast. And you saw people on Twitter talking about, here we go, 53K. I guess it's on Christmas rally and you got to be careful. You got to read the room because people tend to get out. I, the phrase is, I think you get ahead of your skis. People sometimes tend to get out uh, ahead of their skis. And, and we saw that a little bit. Uh, let me just check the chat room. Yep. I see no chart that's been fixed by now. Uh, I assume. So let's see folks reading all the new comments. I'm scrolling down. You can see the charts now, right folks? Uh, let's see. So here's the thing. Here's an interesting question. When you're setting up a stop loss, Jonathan Kruger, like what's considered tight? I mean, that's <sighs> tight. So, I mean, that's really up to you. I mean, stop losses. Uh, what do I have? Uh, what do I have for stop losses? Um, fasten your seatbelt lesson 46. So what do I say there? So here's lesson 46, right? Fasten your seatbelt. Um, so like there's a lot of ways to do a stop loss, right? You can do a money stop, which is like, oh, I'm willing to lose like a certain dollar amount. You can do a percentage stop. But I don't like that because like these, these, these stop losses are based on like not a chart level. Like your stop loss should be based on um, a clear chart level, right? It should be placed on like a clear, like your idea is your stop loss when your idea fails. So what I like to do is structure my trades in such a way that it's tight because I'm entering as close as I can to the point um, at which my idea will be invalidated. And so here's an example. I put out a tweet on a trade. We had a really nice potential set up here for um, Seoul at 160. Okay. So right there. So you can see the price, you know, finding support here in the fourth. It bounces. It comes through right? It, you know, it does that, that bear break and it comes back up above. And so then it comes back and again, so there's the initial kind of, um, establishing of that level. Then there's again, sorry, right there. And then again, right there. Okay. And then again, like, so this day, so right here, 169, you can enter, you pretty much can enter right here at 169 and it's tight because I'm saying to myself, listen, if it breaks below, you know, like 167, I'm out because it will have violated this prior, the prior low here and this low, like I want to enter as close to a level as I can so that like, I don't want to sit around for a long time to try to find out if my idea has failed. So that's like, for me, it's tight because I enter right at the stop loss, um, you know, and that kind of, 
that's kind of how I how I play that. What's up, Paul Garrett? Good to see you. You're on all my streams pretty much. Good to see you, brother. Um, thanks for sharing your penny stock story. It made me feel better about my crazy mistakes, even after reading your book. Look, I've I made I've made so many mistakes. I, I'm sure you folks think I'm a master trader, but I I donkey off money all the time, chasing stuff, FOMOing. Um, you can take a look at Matic. Yeah, Matic is super strong. So, like, but well, the thing is, with any of these charts that are strong, um, you know, people say, well, what's your target? First of all, I'm not even in Matic. Like, 95% of what I tweet, I'm tweeting for you folks. I'm just covering it. I enjoy doing this. Um, Matic has been really strong. And, you know, I talked about this in my Bitcoin live coverage um, in the kind of early part of December. As we were rising, we were approaching, we're rising here. We were approaching this this high and I was expecting it to kind of stutter and fall back, you know, cause it needs time to consolidate big moves take time. And usually you're going to pause a little bit when you're retesting kind of an all time high level. And it did, it kind of fell back and it found that kind of rising demand line. I mean, you can say this looks like a weekly ascending triangle, which it does. It's a bullish continuation pattern. Um, so like, what do I think about it? It's clearly bullish, um, but it doesn't mean it's going to bounce right through here. We have a little initial rejection, but um, you know, you want to buy the dip in this, right? Until proven otherwise. And so like maybe buy the dip here next time at about 215. If it kind of rejects here, you'd kind of buy the dip at this prior high and where, where it was rejected here. Um, but if it punches right through, you can go long. You can go long in that 267, 270 break. But that's your stop loss. That's your idea. If you go long here and then it drops back below, you need to get out, right? You respect your stop loss. You respect your funds. You respect the trade. It's clearly a bullish chart. Um, you've been buying here in these MA200 dips, the test here, the blue line, the test here, the test there. So it's just, it's been a beautiful, a bullish chart. And it, this is, it needs to consolidate, right? Look at that consolidation, 250 down to 70 cents, you know, 170 back to 110, you know, two, 215 back to 150, you know, 150 ish. So it's consolidating. It needs to consolidate. It's still uh, incredibly bullish. Let's see. Love your audiobook. Thank you, folks. Please do check that out. Uh, we have a lot of questions. So, you know, if I miss your questions, I definitely apologize. Sergio says AVAX, please. Well, you say please, then happy to do it. AVAX is bullish, right? You know that you want to play AVAX. Um, but think about it this way. And this is a little bit ahead of Bitcoin because you had the kind of diagonal break and then you had the horizontal break and you got a real clean entry here at 95. Um, on AVAX, if you were tracking this, I mean, a lot of these these bullish charts are pretty easy to play because you want to target them. When the whole market was weak, weak here, December fourth to the fourteenth, like you want to play this more than Link or EOS or some of the weaker alts. And you you what you look for is price structure, and you identify a level where, you know, the resistance is set. The resistance is set here, ninety four, ninety five dollars. You went long in that. You're so you're still long. And it's churning higher, churning higher, but you still have to deal with prior rejection levels. So here we have the lower high, you know, December 1st rejected here as well. So the question is, is it going to punch right through or what's more than likely will it kind of drop back and try to find support here somewhere like a lower high, you know, maybe in that 105, you know, 110 level. So it's clearly bullish. It's clearly consolidating. It's rising that EMA. It's riding. Uh, that EMA eight, um, but it's got some work to do because, you know, we look at what Matic did, you know, it didn't go straight up. It rejects initially and then it comes back and it, it gets a higher low and has that building and that rising support. And that's how those charts often work. As, work. Um, let's check out the chart here. Just saying hi to everybody. No question. Just lots of love for you. Thanks, Chica. I really appreciate that. Uh you know, how to set stop losses. I mean, I just talked about it. And pretty much if you want to right now, you can go right to my YouTube to the educational live streams and watch them. I talk about how to set a stop loss, right? Your stop loss is when your idea fails. I talk about trade, how to structure your trades, how to structure your stop loss. So I've already done that. I've already done videos, many videos in setting stop losses. Uh, Nick had a question about AVE, AAVE. This one's been really bullish. I've been watching it. I haven't tweeted it yet, and I kind of feel bad because I was watching it down here, and I thought, eh, you know, it's an underperformer. Um, here's the thing, though. It's been super strong, but guess what? It's still in a confirmed downtrend because we have the price 
trading below the MA200, with the falling MA200. And we'll observe, because that's what we do as good chart, chart technicians, there are all these rejections at the MA200. So like what's gonna happen right now? We've got three big green candles. You can call it, call it a good old three white soldiers if you'd like. Um, I would be very skeptical that it's gonna break through 300 in this push. Um, it's pushing incredibly fast, um, you know, and it's heading right towards the underside of this channel and the MA200. So I'm always cautious because I've been burned so many times and I expect the price to pause and consolidate. So what you want to see is if this level can hold these lows and these lows. So when the price likely rejects, well, I think it probably will, you want to come back and see, will it hold there? All right. Um, if you're not in it, you could play on the break of the MA200. If you do that, then you have to sell if it goes below the MA200. So that's one way to play it. You could also play on the break of this pretty clear lower high structure right around, you know, 350. So if it goes above 350, you can go long there, but you respect your stop loss. Like it's your trade idea. It's so in short, it's bullish, uh, Nick, but I expect it to probably pause and consolidate. Um, someone named ETC, I guess, is asking about Harmony rather than ETC. That's funny. Uh, one USD. Let's put a couple up here to see hopefully some chart history. When, you, when you're looking at these charts, you need history. So I've covered this for Bitcoin Live. It looks like I've got, um, you know, markings up. This is the key level that I would, would want to see the bulls back up above and they're back up above it. So you've got a shift in momentum kind of back towards the bulls. Uh, you get a little more of that, like, quote unquote, risk on type in, of environment. Um, but you've got that move from the lower Bollinger now to the upper Bollinger. That's kind of a full move. Now the question is, um, you know, is the price going to, it's unlikely to just shoot up. Now we kind of come back and see, ideally, can this level hold as support? So, um, and you've got the flip of the MA50, but the price is kind of chopping through it. So it's not exactly paying attention to the MA50. I would focus on this horizontal level as a bull. You really want to see this hold that 22.7 type range. Um, you know, as it continues higher, you've got resistance here. So it's unlikely to just shoot right through. As I said earlier, it's, you, you expect it to reject and then you're looking for the lower high, the higher low, that kind of building, that rising demand. All right. Uh, how many hours, let's see, of studying trading the clear CMT level. Well, I've only done CMT level one so far. Some folks like Crypto Burb have done two and three. He took his, his CMT three test, so I definitely wish him good luck on that. I'm sure he passed. Um, I'm still studying book two. I'm kind of taking my time with it. I'm in no rush to take the test. I'm enjoying the book and I'm learning, which I like to do. Um, but like it, everybody's different. I studied crazy hard for the level one test. I, I read the book several times. I took notes on it. Then I took the prep course and I, I took notes in the prep course. And then I did all the test quizzes and I made all my, my own like study sheets from those. And I set, studied all those many times. And I probably took the practice quizzes like a hundred, you know, 150 times. I was just, it was just important to me. So I really gave it everything I had. So, I mean, it took me, you know, hundreds, I studied for hundreds of hours. So it's going to depend each, you know, they say your mileage may vary. Your mileage will vary. Um, I think like 75% of people pass the level one uh, or something like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not impossible. It's not like it's hard, but it's not incredibly hard. I mean, you can do it. Um, but your experience will vary. I had experience coming into it and that helped me, but I loved doing it. It really taught me like what's right and what's wrong. I see a lot of bad technical analysis on Twitter and I try, I, I got to learn to let it go because everybody's got their own feed. So, I mean, I think CMT is great if you are serious about uh, learning how to trade. Let's just check out the chat room, everybody. I did CRV. Someone asked me to check out CRV. I've already done CRV, Nick. So happy, Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Go back and check that out. Blessing to you, brother, Joan. Appreciate that. 314 people live with me here for this Ask Me Anything section session. Um, let's see. Let's see. Polkadot. Sure. Let's check out Joshua. How you doing, brother? Let's check out Polkadot. And that's a popular one. I've been watching this one. For me, it's $25 is kind of the big level. 
you see it there 25 it's it's above 25 right now which is nice um but it's not it's you know it's not it's not like out of the woods and you can see this this incredible downward pressure dropping below the ma200 breaking horizontal support and you know when you have a bounce here you still want to be careful um you know i've kind of marked you had this initial you know that we talk about that two level filter where you wait for the um the horizontal break you get that diagonal break to put you on watch for the horizontal breaks you could have gone long here at 28 and now it's pausing a little bit but like when you're thinking about you know when you're trying to identify trades you don't necessarily want to play one of these this one because it's got all this resistance here that's got the ma200 and it's got all this other resistance just above it and we're already basically almost the upper bollinger and so what you're you're thinking is it's probably going to pause here and come back and so you want to watch to see will the higher low hold so for here it would have to be 28 um, back below 28 i would get concerned that the bounce is over right um so i mean if i if i zoom out and i you know i, I go weekly chart it's still like a decent looking chart Kind of a decent looking chart but it's way below these gains of april and the highs of november it's given a lot back and it's still got some serious weakness in the chart and we're, we haven't even really closed above the ma200 look at it's just sideways you can see that with the trend the ma200 the blue line like that's your trend so you know it could flip around and i think i would really start to get bullish on it above about that 32 dollar range you know, above here, I'd start to really say, all right, I'm ready to play dot and kind of move it back up into that category of um, Soul and AVAX and Matic and stuff like that. But for now, it's kind of back to being in the middle of the pack, uh, in my opinion. Can you speak about your plan for crypto stocks? Um, yeah. So, I mean, like I trade, I, 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 uh, I trade equities for fun you know, and for profit, of course, um, I trade with small size because I, you know, it's stressful trading stressful. So I like to trade with small size. It makes it easier for me to manage my positions. I've got a, for equities, I have like a dividend portfolio where I hold stuff that I know, like it's still going to be around like McDonald's or, or, you know, and that, that was a big tip from, from Bob Lucas, who's a big time McDonald's bull. But like, you know, when the market crashes, you know, I'm going to go buy Walmart and McDonald's stuff like that. Like it's going to be around. And those give dividends. So I have that portfolio where I'm, I know like what I want to buy when the market collapses. And then I'll trade stuff for momentum, uh, you know, here and there, uh, pretty small size. With crypto, I kind of have the same um, approach where I have my my hodl, you know, hold on for dear life, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I hold those and I accumulate those. Um, I did sell all my Ethereum at 4,800 and I sold about two thirds of my Bitcoin around 64K. And uh, that was when the, when the like market was topped. It was like with, when there was like no question market was topped. You know, the, you can, I'm not going to really go over it today, but you can watch my prior videos, the ETF run up, the kind of double top of the up thrust, it, Ethereum bounce and the Litecoin bounce. And, you know, so I was like, I, I took the money um, and I've been I've been adding back to my hodl since then. I've been adding back Bitcoin. I've been adding back uh, Ethereum. So all the Ethereum I sold at 4,800, I've been buying it around 4K and lower. Um, you know, so that's kind of my plan and I keep those and I hold those and I say it's hodl, but like, I kind of had to take some profit on that move at because it was such an obvious top. Um, you know, and I put my money where my mouth is and I tweeted it out. I said, Hey, I'm taking profit here. So I'm not just like telling you after the fact to try to look good. I mean, that was my plan. So I hold those Bitcoin and Ethereum and I trade alts in the meantime, and I trade those altcoins to get more money to buy Bitcoin and buy Ethereum. I'm a little more conservative. I don't believe in anything other than Bitcoin and Ethereum because I'm a technical analyst. I'm not a fundamental analyst. I don't know what the next, like, L, I don't even know what like an L1 and L2 are. And I don't care. I just focus on price in relation to support and resistance. I like Ethereum. I like Bitcoin. I know they'll be around. I hodl those. I trade alts to make money to buy more Bitcoin and buy more Ethereum. So let's see, my man, Luis, what's up, Luis? You want to check a look at HBAR? It's been bullish. I've been watching HBAR. Um, we had some relative strength recently, and I tweeted that out. Let's see what the follow-through has been. I haven't looked at it in a couple of days. So I did observe the flip back into support of that MA200, and you had some really nice trade entries, really easy, nice trade entries here on HBAR. 
you know, the December 21st, December 19th, where you had established that resistance, classic throwback, you break through it and you come back. Um, and now we're kind of chopping, basically we're now we're chopping between the MA200 um, and the MA50. So we're kind of in that channel. Um, ah, what would I do? I'd probably give the bulls to edge. I give the edge to bulls here because we're trading above the MA200. We've kind of built this support back up. Um, and I'd say if you're not in it, you're clear to go long. If you can flip this MA50 and this kind of 35 cent cents uh, range, flip it into support, either buy in the breakout. If you're able to, this would be a viable breakout buy. And then if it kind of pauses here, you can come back and try to buy on the throwback, much as you did here. Kind of same concept uh, for H bar. Do you use Glassnode? I do not use Glassnode. Um, I try I try to have as few inputs uh, into my system as possible. I do not look at the Bitcoin dominance chart. I do not look at the order flow. I do not look at on-chain. You know, I believe the price factors in everything and everything else outside of the chart. It's speculation. It can be manipulated. It can be, you can over, you can over-interpret the value of a signal or you can under-interpret the value of a signal. It's just too speculative. So I play with the chart. That's what I use to guide me. Uh, and it's worked really well uh, to this point. Uh, what's the biggest life lesson you've learned from dealing with cancer? That's a great question. Um, I, I don't take anything for granted. You know, even even now, it's trying to plan out. You know, five, ten years from now, I don't, I don't, I don't guarantee I'm going to be around in five or ten years. You know, knowing that at any time, you know, it hit me. It just hit me. I out of nowhere. I was 39 super healthy. And then all of a sudden I had stage three cancer and it's like, Oh, Oh, okay. Like, Oh yes, I guess really, you, you know, the whole idea that every day is a gift, like that's the lesson. And I know that now, and I've learned that it's not, you know, theoretical for me. So just, I, just the fact that I'm still here and every day really is a gift. And, you know, I was sort of having a tough day yesterday, yesterday, for whatever reason, sometimes the holidays are tough. And I definitely miss my mom uh, who died from cancer. But then it's like, you know what? I'm still here and that's a gift. I'm still around. So every day is a gift and just being around and being alive is the biggest gift. Um, the second biggest one, and that came from losing my mom to cancer. Um, and by the way, if anyone's dealing with cancer, I'll send you my cancer memoir for free. Just, you know, hit me up on Twitter. I wrote about that. Um, you know, if it helps you, let me know. I'll just I'll email it to you. I learned that life is about more than items. Like I'm just not about items. It's just an item. It's nothing. And money, like money, you can't take it with you. You know, you you work all your whole life for all this stuff, and then like, what's the point? It's 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 human experiences. It's friendships. It's love. It's all these things. So life, it's just things. You know, as soon as my mom passed, I went through and I went through my house. I threw out like fifty percent of what I had. It just got rid of junk stuff I'm holding on to. So life is more. It's about more than items. So don't don't focus on items. Focus on relationships. Focus on yourself. That was a great question. All right. What's going on here? Uh, does this remind you of May through June Bitcoin? Um, yeah, a little bit. You know, I've been thinking about that a little bit. You know, and we talk about how the uh, a little bit, but it's different, different context. But you can just see there's a little bit of a similarity. And what I've been watching for and what we noticed with Bitcoin, um, you know, we didn't, do we have the, we don't have the spring. So we had this spring with Bitcoin where we did temporarily violate that 30K. We did it here. Um, and this is really well documented, especially if you go watch my uh, educational live streams really well documented where we had the spring, we broke through below and we broke through below again. And that was a nice, nice fuel for the bulls. Um, and you've got, you know, you've got the similar diagonal break and then you had the horizontal, right? So with this bottom, we also had, we started to close above the EMA eight, these two days, tagged it, tagged it again. And then you got the moving average cross. So I've been kind of watching to see if we get those types of things, but a different structure. It's different structure because here we're just below this failed head and shoulders and we still get that 60K just above. So it's it's somewhat similar. You know, yeah, we're starting to get that EMA eight action and we've got the diagonal break and we've got the horizontal break, you know, but we don't have the spring and we still have major, major overhead resistance, major, 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 right? 
can't really be super duper bullish until we flip um, this level back into support, right? It's just the way it is. It's just that's just the way it is, right? So, you know, it's some similarities, but it's not. It's not like a you know when people try to say, "Hey, look what it did in June," and they try to copy it. Like, don't do that. Focus on what's going on right now. All right. Um, where would you find the throwback in FTM? Um, sure. Well, there it is. I and mean, this is a pretty clear one. Throwback would be here at about a dollar eighty. It's the clear level, right? The highs of September, lows of October, lows of uh, November. There, you know, middle and end. And now that was a clear test and we broke through it. Um, you know, we broke through that clear test. So, you know, that's that's strength. And that's where you'd want to buy on throwback. If you get a chance and the price, um, you know, stutters here at some point, it falters, maybe at 220. You want to come back and buy that retest or the bullish throwback to the 190 range. Um, I feel you lost my dad four years ago. I'm sorry if you lost my friend and I definitely... It's definitely hard. So I appreciate you sharing that uh, with everybody. Uh, let's see. Someone asked me about Airweave. AR. Yeah, a bunch of you asked about Airweave. Sure. T -t -t AR. I don't have it here. Let's add it. AR USTD. Hopefully, we get some price history. So it's sideways. Like, that's the thing about this chart. Yeah, I've got a nice move right off the MA200. And initially rejected at the MA50. And then you get that throwback. All right. So you got the initial initial support hold, which is good. And then you kind of uh, establish your resistance. Well, before that, you'd establish resistance. Initial support. Rejected and then broken through. And then boom, throwback. Bullish throwback. Again, kind of a bullish throwback at 51. Um yeah, it's rising, but look, it's just a rectangle. Like, don't get, it's just a rectangle. It's just sideways. It's just, if you go weekly, you really haven't done anything. So there's been a lot better stuff to play um, while the price continues to consolidate. Um, it still looks decent. I'll give you that. And kind of, if you're not in it right now, uh, what would I do? I mean, I mean, if you want to play it and look for a level, you, you know, you're trying to look for something to work with. So you say, okay. You know, these lows, these highs, and now it's rejected here, you know, intra-candle. It's not a confirmed rejection, but you say, all right, I'll go long, you know, above 63. But you might be better off just buying on the e we on the EMA8. See how it pulls back? So you want to buy a dip. So maybe you wait for it to pull back and play the EMA8. Um, and it's rising, but will it get rejected here at 74 or at 80 and then come back? You know, we'll have to wait and see. There's much better charts to play because you're just showing, you know, for months now, you're just chopping sideways uh, on AR Weave. All right. Uh, let's see. Wise words. Thanks. Good to have you, Nadia. Nad, I like that name. Nadia Miranda Alves. Nice to have you with us. Smash the love, guys. Yeah, please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Definitely appreciate that. That helps me get the uh, videos out to, videos out to other people. All right, so I'll just do one or two more. Someone asked me about Kadena. This has been going on for quite a while, but uh, KDA, Kadena. There, I have it at the bottom. I think I saw it. Kadena, yeah, I mean, it's um, overall a bullish chart, but you've lost that MA50, the orange line. And you see you've got kind of a rectangle or pretty well-established support zone, the lower kind of the upper support. And when it's bouncing here, it's likely to reject at that 15, 14, nine range, likely to reject at the orange line, the MA50. So, you know, if you're not in it, you know, here, this is all chop in the middle of the channel and there's really no clear way of what to do and how to play it. So I think you either want to play and re-enter back up above 15 or maybe try to enter if you get another chance around nine, nine, you know, 50, uh, at the bottom of the range. Uh, for now, it's just pretty clearly range bound. You're welcome. Thank you for doing AR. Uh, you're definitely welcome for that. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. We'll do one more. We'll do XLM. Any suggestion on XLM? Well, it's been weak. I would say generally avoid it because it's been weak. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah, so this is a terrible looking chart. You do not want to be in this. Kind of looks like VET. Um, yeah, it's trading below the MA200. Um, 
it's essentially trending down and it just had a minor bounce off of those September, that September level. Um, yeah, I would avoid it. I would definitely avoid the chart. That's my suggestion on XLM. It's a bearish chart. That would be my suggestion would be to avoid it. Uh, I've shown you a bunch of charts. Um, there's some great charts. You can play the stronger ones. Uh, Luna, I already did Luna, right? I'll do Luna. We'll call that the last one. So Luna, I mean, what what can you say? I've been telling folks to play this. Um, and like I said, it doesn't mean just FOMO in. It means to identify an entry point. Okay. So we had a beautiful throwback here at the $52 range. I did take that long myself. I took that long. Uh, it bounced off of that. You have the highs of November. Initially rejected at 77, came back, and boom, it just punched right through. Um, I would say you want to be ready and maybe even have a bid in right now around $78. Try to buy if we get back to that level. It's incredibly hot. It's likely to continue. But, you know, if you look what it's been doing, it um, it makes a big run and then it consolidates. It even did look at that consolidation. That was with the Bitcoin breakdown. Big move, boom, back. Big move, boom. Big move, boom. It's doing that upper to lower. It's consol upper lower Bollinger. So are we going to do that here? Upper, you know, we're going to come back lower. So look to buy this on the next dip as it consolidates. That would be uh, how I'd play that. Uh, someone requested ADA. That's fine. I can do ADA real quick. Um, don't keep me here, for, here forever though, folks. Uh, ADA. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, I want to buy it at a dollar. Um, I actually did ADA last night with, with, um, a really, really excellent trader, Chartman Dan. If you go to the Banter YouTube and uh, Lesson 13, he covered ADA. It was one of the trades he was in. And for me, I'm not really interested in ADA unless it's above 150 because 150 was that level from the um, really the failed head and shoulders that sent us long. And you see how we initially initially bounced off of it and came below it and rejected. So we're kind of right back at where it should reject. So even with ADA, I'd almost be looking to take a short here. You know, this is a really classic short setup um, where you set your stop loss at like a dollar fifty. It's at one forty four, so this would be a pretty tight stop loss. You know, so I would short here um, it, unless it breaks above one fifty. And if it breaks above one fifty, I, I would consider going long, and I'd have my stop loss right around here one forty five range. So it's got a little bounce, bounce right into the underside of resistance. I'm really personally only interested in going long back around a dollar, dollar five. Uh, or maybe back up above, um, you know, kind of that one, 150 type of range. Let me just review the chat room again for everybody. Some really nice comments from Crypto Patriot. He says, if you haven't read Trading Wisdom, thank you. I'm really proud of, really proud of the, um, the book. And there's been amazing feedback. It's funny. I get tweets every day from people holding up the book and they say, look what came. It's Christmas or they're on vacation and there's a picture of the book with them like by a pool and i'm like that's amazing like i wrote a book and somebody out there in the world is reading my book while they're hanging out by the pool uh that is pretty pretty darn cool um chads where can i get your indicators i said this at the beginning simp sidemon simp sidemon um i said this at the beginning and i'll say it again go to my youtube go to educational live streams and watch these especially the last one I explain every, my entire setup, how to do it. It's all default settings and trading view. You got to watch that. All right. So please go ahead and do that. I'm going to remind you folks, of course, you can find me. I'm on Twitter at Big Cheds. I do a lot of kind of the chart observations, academic observations about chart. I do a lot of um, trading wisdom stuff as well. Stuff like this, quotes from my book. I'm trying to help you folks out. I enjoy it. I enjoy what I do. So check me out on Twitter. Go to, to the um, Banter YouTube. Check out their playlist, Trading Wisdom. 13 great episodes. I did another one last night with Chartman Dan. Go to my YouTube. Hit like, hit subscribe. You're here now. Thank you for that. Um, and go to this educational live stream. If you're brand new, many many of you are, you've got to watch this. Like if I, this video alone, I could have packaged it as like a, you know, a trading uh uh, uh, program and sold it for a thousand dollars, right? It's that good. Watch it. It's free. Watch it, watch it, watch it. All right. My book's on Amazon. We've talked about that. Um, if you can't buy the book, all right, trading wisdom, check out the free version, right? I've got 10. So that's 20% of it. I've 10 out of 50 lessons up for free. I'll eventually have the whole thing 
get to hear me kind of reading from the book, expanding on the wisdoms, giving you some examples, stuff like that. You definitely want to check that out. The book's on Amazon. The reviews are great. People love it. I'm very thankful that it's done so well. And I appreciate you folks, of course, for all your support. Kindle, hardcover, paperback, and audio, the Audible book. I'm going to look to, I'm going to be um, porting this to the iOS and other formats as well. But this is where you can get it for now. If you really want to learn how to trade, if you're serious about learning how to trade, join the community, the best in class educational platform for Crypto Bitcoin Live. Uh, we just had a big sale. We have a huge, huge increase in membership and the feedback has been amazing. People are loving it. I'm super proud to be involved. Twice a week, long form, complete market updates. And I'm really proud of that. Check out the link, uh, the link below in the video description. So that's it. I've been having fun. Um, you know, it's Christmas time. It's holiday time. Uh, most people have kind of logged off and they're not around. But I figured I'd do this kind of ask me anything um, session to reach out to you folks and just kind of let you know that I appreciate you and I appreciate everything you do or just being you know in involved in part of this community with me. So I guess it's time to uh, get this party kicked off once again. Take care, everybody. Everybody take care. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Be safe. Have fun. Until next time, big chest out.